week. And then I pull back a little bit further and then just, do, so I'm just doing one or two uh, a week. And now I'm probably doing like you two, two to four a month. Okay. Is probably an average for me. Okay. Yeah. And if, you know, it, but it's still keeping and drawing people in and keeping that consistency and I'm all about consistency. So I think that's whatever you can handle, then be yep. consistent about it. Okay. Yep. Good. That was so a, great, gotta, a great piece of content. Go ahead, Terry. Terry's dog just kicked the power cord, so he uh, disappeared for a little bit. Oh, shoot. <laughs> we all have these animals going on here today. <laughs> well, that's kind of funny, but what's even funnier is I'm the one recording. Oh. oh. I became the host, though, so I think it's fine. I think we're good because I... It said Janet became the host. I saw that. So Interesting. I think we're okay, hopefully, on that. Yeah, there's no chance we're okay, but it'll be, <laughs> it'll be fun to see what happens next. So, Are you I, kidding? This is tech and marketing. We're not okay. <laughs> we're definitely. We weren't okay we before okay we got into ago. tech and marketing. It's, it's expect to be okay after making <laughs> So... Yeah, Ernie, sorry if you missed uh, some of the brilliance that Mike just shared. So, entirely yeah, possible. huge mic drop moment right there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you missed I know. <laughs> How to write one blog post for the rest of your life. Exactly. <laughs> that is the most important tip ever shared on this show. And it's gone. Uh, Janet yeah. knows it. And maybe I do. Yeah, I do. Still yeah. share. Maybe yeah, that's that's in the check. Janet Johnson. So uh, we, obviously we were talking about frequency. Um, you know, I, another topic would be what to write on. Um, but I'm curious about how long does it take to construct a, a proper blog post? Because you were saying, you know, mm. you could write one every single day, but the content and the quality of the content may go down. So how much time do you allocate for a good blog post? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. It's kind of a huge question, actually, because I know that that some people, when I say things like run a blog post every day, their their brains explode a little. Oh, bit. I start having panic. <laughs> yeah, they start panicking <laughs> because they know when they've tried it in the past, they know how much time they put into those articles, and one of the things that I want to encourage people to do is you know, first of all again like everything else understand that blogging is a skill that takes time to learn how to do it takes time to learn how to do it better and better and better none of us are born expert bloggers so i can create a piece of content today way faster than i did seven eight years ago because of experience i've now written hundreds and hundreds of articles um so it, it that in itself helps me and it will help you and, and, and anybody listening uh, that just through repetition it will go faster but the second big point that I like to make is that a lot of people spend too much time chasing blog topics that they're not experts on they'll come up with an idea for an article that requires you to spend six to eight hours of research just to become enough of an expert to write the article. And if you're going into it, having to do that much research, you've probably picked the wrong topic to write about. Um, at least if you're trying to create volume. Now it might be that for your business, that's a really, really important topic that you need to cover. And it just so happens that, that you don't know so much about it. So you're going to have to do some research on it. And those are okay articles to write, but those shouldn't be the kinds of articles that you write all the time because they take too much time mm -hmm. and, and they take so much time. We're writing research articles like we did in high school and college. And that in itself brings up some anxious uh, uh, moments and memories. And, and we end up being probably perfectionists when it comes to those mm -hmm. kinds of pieces of content. You know, you spend so much time on it part of you wants it to be perfect and so i know people that have spent dozens of hours on pieces of content that they haven't yet published even to this day i'm like well what good has that done you you just wasted all that time really um so what i teach is called the blogger's mindset and part of the blogger's mindset is first understanding that there are three different kinds blog posts let me jump in because i don't yeah. want to necessarily lose this thought and i want to hear about the blogger's mindset and the three things but yeah i want to talk about perfectionism for a half a second okay because when when i think of doing something perfect 
I laugh uncontrollably because I know it's – I don't even know what my perfection is, let alone what Janet's perfection is or Mike's perfection My is. Mine's or, up higher yeah, than his. It is <laughs> like off the charts. Like she'd probably have questions for this show if I'd let her, but no, no I'm doing that. I, authenticity. Um, but it's like – so how do you – how do you really know perfection, especially for your audience? If it's, is that real? Does it exist? Well, it, it, it isn't real. It doesn't exist. There's probably no such thing as the perfect blog post. Okay. Um, for anybody, let alone if you're only looking at it, if you're limiting the scope to just yourself, is it possible for me to create the perfect blog post for me and for my audience? The answer is still going to be no. There's still going to be issues with it. So one of the things that you want to do, at least that I do, is focus on fixing the things that I know I can fix. Like, okay, obvious things, grammar, spelling, structure and organization, um, you know, does it read well, those kinds of things. Um, that should be part of the normal editing process that we go through. And then the second part is going through rereading a blog post and saying, have I answered all the questions, you know, or am I, am I leaving things out that probably should be included in this? Um, and then the final question that, that I guess occurs to me is, okay, how much time am I putting into this now? Where am I at in my time? Uh, because if I'm hitting, you know, two, three, four hours or more on one article, I have to start questioning whether I'm getting out of the additional time, real value for me. Because my time's valuable, your time is valuable. There's a dollar amount, whether you realize it or not, that should be associated with every hour of your day. And so for the each hour that you put into a specific piece of content, you better be able to get that back mm. through ROI. So, with a multiple, not just- With a multiple, not, yeah. If, if you just traded it, you shouldn't have written it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Some of it's testing, you know, which is, which is, um, part of why, you know, sometimes I tell people don't, don't do what I do. Um, you know, I, I, I give myself the title of content marketing practitioner because I'm always practicing. I'm always testing. I'm always experimenting. And if someone looks too closely at my content, too closely at my site, too closely at my social, um, they're going to see some things that aren't going to make sense to them. And, and, and that's partly why I said, look, I am not a small business owner in the traditional sense. So should you have pop-ups on your site? Like I do probably not. Mm -hmm. Should you use social media the way I do? Probably not. Um, You know, should you try blogging about some of the things that I blog about or some of the techniques that I use? Probably not because I'm testing. Right. And I'm trying yeah. to put some things, you know, I, I tell myself over and over again, don't blog about pop culture and try to connect it to business. For instance, I will try to write what are the best lessons and this is, I can't remember the exact title, but it's something like um, what lessons can we take from beauty and the beast? Marketing lessons from Beauty and the Beast. Marketing lessons from Star Wars. Marketing lessons from The Matrix. Um, these are these are articles that I write because of their they're my interests. I'm interested in these movies, in this pop culture, and I'm interested in marketing. Nobody else shares those same interests at the same time. Those are the worst articles to write. They always fail. I'm like Charlie Brown and Lucy with these articles. I, I kid you not. I, I have an idea. I'm sitting in the car, whatever. I'm thinking, you know what? Disney has repurposed Beauty and the Beast. (laughs) (laughs) They took some content that they created a long time ago, and it was super popular, and and they kept plugging out different things with it, and now they're turning it into a live movie, and it's amazing, and marketers and bloggers should do the exact same thing. And I think, wow, that'd be a great piece of content. And I'm wrong. <laughs> Couldn't be more wrong. Nobody wants to read about that. Nobody cares. People are nice to me, but in their minds, they're thinking, Mike, you're an idiot. <laughs> this is stupid. You know you're in trouble when you're liking your own post, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I even wrote an article on LinkedIn about this problem that I have. <laughs> and I said, please, people, stop me from doing this over and over again <laughs> by Charlie Brown syndrome. And, and even that, it, it went over people's heads. So don't, yeah. <laughs> try, to, try to stay down at the level. You know, th that's awesome. And it reminds me of kind of what I was um, going to mention because what you're talking about the repurposing of content. And I do believe, I'm a huge believer in repurposing of content because we all struggle and that might be your mindset. We all struggle with, you know, coming up with the same content. So one of the things that I am is some people like to write. You must like to write because you come from that. I mean, yeah. I would prefer to talk on camera all day. I mean, you know, that would be my preference. So what I do now is I come up with topics for a Facebook Live and I repurpose it to be put onto a blog post. And then I actually have my VA do transcribing of it and write it all out. And then I go in and edit and expand on it. So maybe you want to talk to that, that level because it's just what works for me a little bit better than just straight out writing because that's why yeah, i don't have a book exactly yet right. because the book should have come a long time ago as terry knows but it just hasn't because i don't like writing well i don't <laughs> want to lose sight of his three his three points i know we we'll want to get back to, those to that three but this is yep. exactly right and this is why i said content pieces of content earlier and not blog posts Okay. Because some people, when they hear blog post, that means something to them. Right or wrong, it might mean something. 700 that, word essay. Bam. Yeah, exactly. You Better know, pick some people, pictures too. They might think, you know, five paragraph essay, or they might think, wait, I'm supposed to write about where I went to lunch today? Who cares about that? I've had clients, business clients, who they have those previous impressions, maybe even misimpressions about what a blog post is. So content is really what we're talking about in whatever form it is. And if you start with a live video like this and you spin that off into an audio podcast in a transcribed article or blog post on your site, and maybe you turn it into a presentation and you put it on SlideShare and you slice up pieces of the video and you push those out into social media as posts, that's all content. Just you happen to start with a live video because that's what you like. Me, I want to curl up into one of those total cover up blanket snuggy <laughs> things after I do one of these things because I, I like sitting behind the no by camera. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like to write because I really like to write. Um, uh, but that's okay. You know, everyone's a little bit different. I mean, you yeah. know, depending on the business, you know, I've spoken with real estate agents, for instance who they have neither the time nor the inclination to write, but they love the camera and they have so many great opportunities to walk into a house and do a live video walkthrough of a house that just come on the market uh, or, or focus on one really, really cool aspect of that house, like the view from the back porch or something like that. And then, you know, I walk them through, okay, how do I take that video? How do I create that video? And then what do I do with it afterwards? And there's so many cool things you can do when you start with video, I mean, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, I love writing, but starting with live video is amazing when it comes to content repurposing because it just, it kills it. Uh, particularly if you're doing Facebook Live because then you get to take advantage of Facebook's algorithm and reach so many more people. It's, it's fantastic. So that's great that you're doing it that way, for sure. So the repurposing and you can go either direction, really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and now there's apps and things that are coming out that will help you take content that you started by writing it and turn that into video mm -hmm. which i haven't yep. gotten into yet but uh, darren rouse from uh pro blogger uh, shared something along those lines uh, just a, a few days ago in his community uh that i i, I bookmarked it because i really want to check out how, how mm -hmm. this works um, yeah. or you know taking a piece of written content turning it into a presentation that you can put on a slide share and then you can turn that presentation into a video easily and push that out to Facebook and YouTube. And now you've kind of reversed the process, yeah. but you're still repurposing. You're still yeah. creating additional pieces of content out of your original thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So it could go either direction, just repurposing. Yep. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, let's get to the three. <laughs> the, the three. We want to hear the three. The three. So top the way three. I bring it out is you have cheater posts, standard posts, and pillar posts. 
Okay. And I'll start with the middle. Your standard blog post is 750 to 1250 words. This may vary from blogger to blogger, from business to business, but generally speaking on average, that's, that's your standard blog post. And in fact, I usually teach a five paragraph essay kind of form where you've got an introduction, you're making a few points and you're backing up those points and then you've got a conclusion fairly typical. And that's the kind of post that it should take you an hour or two maximum to write. Now I get, uh, you know, if, if you're just getting into this, you may belabor that a little bit. It might take you more time and that's okay. At some point, that's what it should take an hour or two max. You should be writing about things that you know. So these should be fairly easy blog posts to create. If it takes hours of research, it probably shouldn't be a standard blog post. It's probably going to be a longer post, which we'll get into in a moment. But those standard blog posts are what you should be creating most of the time. So if you're blogging once a week, probably two or three of your articles per month should be in that 750 to 1250 length. Uh, you know, area the cheater post is 250 to 500 words and might be an embedded video you might you might find a video i'm that's a cheater post created. a cheater post all the time <laughs> yeah I mean, somebody else's video i'm not even talking about you created oh video. god i got it you go yeah. out and you and you oh find, you know, interesting a, a video that neil patel does okay got it uh, you know or if you're in a different industry find you know another video that somebody else sure. has created and you write a quick introduction hmm. you say hey i found this great video that neil did talking about email marketing and funnels and it's brilliant check it out and i mean it's almost like a social share on your blog yeah really yeah um, but you know it's a blog post and so it, what you really want to do is add your own opinion add your own insight what did you take away uh you maybe even do some bullet points these were the takeaways that i got from this video uh you know share in the comments what you thought what were your takeaways mm -hmm. uh, you know something along those lines but that's something that probably take you in half an hour or less Really, maybe fit, maybe a little bit longer if it takes you a while to pick a video. You know, if you're indecisive in that regard, um, you know. But these are the kinds of things that we usually stumble upon. We're yeah. on YouTube anyways, and we find a video. We're on another website and we see an infograph. That's another great way to create a cheater post. You know, mm, an infograph that again somebody yeah. else has created. They Got want you to embed it. these things. That's why they create them. So take advantage of that. There's even sites out there that all they are infographs yeah um so you can take that infograph and embed it you can take a social post and embed it and just craft a quick blog post around that other piece of content slide share another example anything that you can embed that has a, some rich content in and of itself that's a great basis for a cheater post that we don't want just text like we said before 140 characters, really 250 words. If that's all that we're providing, that's Seth Godin. He can do that because he has a million followers already and he can share some brilliant insight in 250 words that his followers will eat up. But we're not there yet. We'll probably never be there because that's not our business model and that's fine. Could we so, just have him share some of those million followers? Because that would make this a lot yeah. <laughs> I mean, have we Give thought about how to do that? Oh, he's listening. <laughs> so, so that's the cheater post. Now, it, I say it cheater for yeah. good reason. You're yeah. cheating a little bit there by, you know, pulling off of somebody else's content. You're not really putting a whole lot of time into it yourself. So it's not the kind of article that you're going to want to do all the time. No more than once a month. Um, but if, now if you're just starting, do a little more often. When I was just starting, one of the ways that I got to six to 14 articles per week was that I would talk about app updates. Now, back then, oh. Facebook wouldn't say, oh, we update our app every two weeks just to polish it and bring you the latest things. No, they would tell you what they were doing. And so, you know, you'll see articles way back when in my archive about how Facebook just did this for their app. Messenger just did that. Um, you know, YouTube just added this, that, or the next thing. Janet's done a lot of those live videos, I, almost to that extent, for Pinterest, yeah. Instagram, you'll still, I mean, Facebook advertising. You'll, you'll see that today, and you go to Engadget or TechCrunch, mm -hmm. and, and half their articles are just 
hey, so and so updated their app, and now it does this, that, or the next thing. Um, they're they're really short. Uh, yeah, and, and that's okay. They've got a big readership. That kind of a cheater post, then again, would that be considered yeah. the cheater? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I actually think else. that I go to some of these articles. I'm like, well, this didn't tell me anything that I didn't already know. Already know. <laughs> Just by looking at the app update. Um, and some of these that's app funny. updates are funny. But anyways, <laughs> so that's the cheater post. Again, okay. Do that, that too, too often. The yeah. other end of the extreme is that pillar post. These pillar posts should be 2,500 words or more, preferably 10,000 words or more. These should be massive, massive articles that are pillars of your business. That's why we call them pillar posts. These are the kinds of articles that will end up driving tremendous amounts of traffic over time to your site because they unequivocally with tremendous amounts of authority answer really, really important questions that your target audience has. Got it. And these Jared, are, the are look on Jared's face I, right now did is Did you the think best. I froze for a second? Like the technology <laughs> just kind of like, because I was like, ten thousand. I'm like, I think I have ebooks shorter than ten thousand. I don't know. Yeah, sure. oh, that's, but it makes people sense. looking at these will it think, "Wow, sense. this is an ebook." Oh, okay. Got you it. know, and that's what I publish. I've got one article that is like the resource for how to promote a blog post and it is over 10,000 words and I have published it as an ebook on Amazon. You can download it there. But if you really want to know everything that there is to do, every technique, every tool, every platform, every consideration and how to promote a blog post, this is it. I've put everything into one article. So could you take like, let's say um, I write a lot about Pinterest. Let's just use that as an example. So could I put the like five or 10 up, different blogs together into one post and create that as a, I mean, would that be a cheater way to do it in a way? Um, If you've already published them, that wouldn't work because okay. it's going to be duplicate content. And, and I say that, and, and, and don't get me wrong, that doesn't necessarily mean you would be punished, but because you've already published that content, elsewhere and google knows that for sure yeah google's not going to treat your new curated post as an authority if people are asking questions and searching google is going to continue to send traffic to those first five posts probably and and ignore the new piece of content that really just curated that old content um Hmm. so yeah you want it to be unique Okay. You want to be well researched, thorough. I mean, thorough is probably the biggest keyword, the most important mm. concept as you're going through this particular topic. I want to answer every single question somebody could ever possibly have about this post. I got a comment from a reader the other week that's probably the most amazing, the best. Uh, the most impactful comment that I've ever gotten from a reader in 10 years of blogging. She said, as she was going through my article, as she was reading, other questions would keep popping up in her mind. And as she was reading, every time she had a question, that was the next thing that I had wrote, the answer to that question. Mm. So by the time she got to the end of the article, she had no more questions. I'd answered all of her questions. Like I'd been in her head preemptively (laughs) writing this article just for her. She was, well, that was nice of you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a cool little feature that Google has coming out. Those <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'm like, that's exactly what I try to do is, is think ahead. Okay. If I'm reading this article, if I'm interested in this topic, what are the questions do I have? She mm-hmm. happened to be reading about vine, the network that Twitter had bought and then eventually killed vine died mm-hmm. was you know it was no longer last january she wasn't a heavy vine user um but she'd used vine a few times and then in i guess it's may now she realized that vine was gone and she's like what what happened to vine and she stumbled on an article that i wrote what happened to vine <laughs> so she was reading about what happened to vine and and why did twitter do this and then she's like well okay what what happens with my existing vines. And sure enough, that's like the next section in my article. Well, if you've got vines, here's what you can do and, and so on. So that was really cool to read that. And it was re- very reinforcing to me that that's the way to do this. 
people mm-hmm. might not actually come right out and say, you answered all my questions, but you'll see that you answered all their questions when they comment that they appreciate the article, when they subscribe to your list, and when they share it to social media, which is what we find. Articles that are that 2,500 word length and more over time get way more social shares and way more search engine traffic Mm. than the cheater and the standard posts. So you want to aim to have four pillar posts per year, one per quarter coming out. And over time, those will do tremendous things for your business. Okay. Mm. That's a great piece of Intel. Yeah. yeah. Talk about images. And then I, I, let me just, for ten, it's the top of the hour. We're starting this show off. We're sitting here with Mike Alton. He's the uh, blogger behind Social Media Hat, and he is the chief marketing officer of Site Cell. I'm doing this because I'm worried that we're going to miss the entire first part of this recording. I sneaking suspicion. So he shared some good stuff. You'll never get to hear it, but you'll get to hear the rest of the good stuff he shares now. So content in the content images or other videos or what 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 do we need to do there man yeah i talked about this when i talk about making your content spark okay it's it's we can write five paragraphs and they can be brilliant but today people are looking for more they they want to make sure that uh they're they're engaged, they're interested, they're excited, uh, they're emotionally impacted in some way by your content. So give that to them. So every blog post that you write, every piece of content that you create should have a featured image at the top. That's the image that should be set up so that if somebody, you or anybody else shares that content to social media, that's the image that gets attached automatically and there's ways to do that. But also within the content itself, We need to break it up a little bit. We need to make it easy for people to read. We want to make sure that we're communicating to them on multiple levels through imagery, through text, um, so that we're conveying emotion. We're doing all those things as a good writer that we would do. So use things like white space. You know, don't be afraid to end a paragraph with a couple of really impactful words and actually move those two words onto their own line so that they really stand mm. out and deliver some power. Do mm. that. It's an audio example, right? So you, 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 you break things up in that way. Use bullet points, use numbered lists, um, embed things like video and infographs like we talked about, embed social media posts, if it makes sense. Use things like click to tweet uh, to get people, like if you've got a great quote or a statistic or something like that that you've you know pulled into the text uh, of your blog post, you can use click to tweet so that it's really easy for somebody. Just click a button and it opens up a Twitter share window that already has that quote or statistic or, or a great piece of text in a tweet ready to go and all they do is hit the tweet button and now they've shared that with their audience Mm -hmm. quote graphics or even just block quotes you know where you're just really again pulling out some of the more salient details of the text and highlighting it featuring it making it impactful in some way those are all different techniques that you could use to make those even just five paragraphs read easier read smoother be even more interesting hit people on different emotional levels um you know our brains our eyes we all receive information a little bit differently um you know some of us we all put it this way we all get information in different ways we all can see an image and read some text and hear some audio and watch a video and learn differently that way. But then each one of us individually can receive that information to one degree or more, you know? So you might like video. You might really like to consume content using video and that might resonate better with you. You might like it because you actually learn better when you're able to have this kind of interaction. Others of us, self-included we'd rather read Mm -hmm. that's how we learn that's how i 
learn and retain information, it's by reading. If I hear you tell me something, it's not going to stick as well for me. So having those kinds of different elements yeah. in a blog post can really make it impactful. So one last point on this, that pillar post that I mentioned, one of the ways that you can really make that powerful and help people, no matter who your readers are, is to turn it into a video and turn it into an audio recording and have all three of those there at one place. So they can read the whole article if they're a reader. They can watch you talking about it in a video or a presentation in a video format maybe. And then they can hear you reading it. Audio, audio, audio. Audibly. That's the word I'm looking for. Audibly. <laughs> uh, you know, social media examiner, for instance, they do that for some of the more important articles. They'll have an audio version of the article that they upload to uh, SoundCloud, I think. Uh, and then they embed the SoundCloud player on the article. So if I don't want to read it, I can just hit the play button. I can listen to it and be, you know, doing other things if I want to multitask, you know, or just sit back and relax and, you know, let somebody speak it to me. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. A lot of great information. Well, now I really, we, we've got jobs to do, don't we, Terry? Especially yeah. you, you're starting a brand new blog. So there's some, there's some improvement good. opportunities, let's call them. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, you know, yeah, I, no, nobody listening and nobody reading my stuff should ever feel like they're doing it wrong. Yeah. Uh, I mean, most of the things that I talk about, they're not things that you're doing wrong. They're things that you could seriously, honestly do just better. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll forewarn you, okay, this, this is something you should not be doing. And if you're doing this, stop it right now, because you're doing it wrong. Like when you go to LinkedIn, and you export all of your LinkedIn contacts, and then you import them in your MailChimp, so that you can start sending them your newsletter. Don't do that. That's wrong. <laughs> not including images in your blog posts. Well, you should do that. And so if you haven't been doing it, okay, change, start doing it now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. How can people get a hold of you or get more information? What's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, the socialmediahat.com is my personal blog. And sitesell.com slash blog is where I also create a lot of content. Or follow me. I'm on all the major social networks, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Dig, Stumble Upon, Empire Avenue. I can keep going. There's lots of them. <laughs> No, seriously, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, those are probably the best places to, to okay. read Mike Alton. Okay, awesome. Awesome, thank you. And uh, we also, where you can find us, businessgrowthtime.com. We have a uh, past, a lot of past podcast episodes, Business Growth Time. More than 50, right? We've more hit, than we've 50. the magic oh, number. We're way over 50. We're, we're like 50. almost 90. Yes. So, <laughs> That's still more We're getting than close. <laughs> um, so then we also have a business growth time group on Facebook, and that's businessgrowthtime.xyz. You can get there that way. We'd love to have you join Mike, and then we can uh, we go back and forth and answer questions there also. So thank you so much for your time, Mike, for coming on our show, and thanks, Ernie's, for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>